I need to borrow your car. Don't tell me they're towing yours. No, it wouldn't start. That's what you get for keeping the wreck and giving the good car to the Latin lover. I did not give my car to Ramon. It was part of the divorce settlement. Settlement? Jordan, he got the half that was worth something. Yeah, and I got what I deserve for falling in love with him. I'll be on the cellular. My Aunt Kitty calls. Here. Is she still trying to get you to go to work for her? Well, if she is, she's just trying to be helpful. She hasn't quite accepted my choice of profession yet. Researching family histories will never turn into a multi-million dollar cosmetic business like hers. Hello? Uh, how are you, Jordan? Besides, late as always. Oh, I'm sorry, Aunt Kitty, but my car broke down. I wish you'd let me buy you a decent one. You have spoiled me enough already. Would you please bring us a nice pot of tea? Yes, ma'am. How are your mom and dad? Uh, they're just fine. And how is business? Not bad. People are interested as ever in tracing their family history, and more and more adopted kids are looking for their birth parents. Well, if you're not too busy, I have a little job for you. You want me to track down someone's family? Yes. Mine. Yours. I was an orphan, abandoned in Hungary just after the First World War. An orphan? Did Uncle Jack know this? I've never told anyone. Why? When I was younger, it didn't seem to matter. But since Jack's death, I've become more aware of my own mortality. Without too long a time to look ahead to, I've decided to finally uncover my past. I feel a little silly telling you this. Don't. We all want to know where we came from and be certain of who we are. What do you know about Hungary? Not much. I was only four years old. But I was in a Catholic orphanage in the village of Lika. Back then, I was known as Katya Davidov. When I was found in the streets of Budapest, I was carrying this photograph. Is this you? It could be, I don't know for sure. It's all so long ago. I've been told that the egg is a Fabergé. The encrusted jewels and gold on it could be worth $10 million. An object of such value is sure to have an owner somewhere. It could be a significant clue to that little girl's identity. The first thing I would do is contact an art expert. Jordan, if word gets out that the head of Ridgewood Cosmetics is an orphan, I'll have hundreds of relatives in a week. I'm always discreet, Aunt Kitty. Only my assistant, Molly, will know. Do you have anything else I can go on? All I had when they found me was that photo. And a little necklace I gave you on your 16th birthday. I had no idea. Please do what you can. If I do have an unknown family out there, I'd dearly love to find them. While I still have time enough to get to know them. You're on the overnight to Milan. And who's this Dr. Antonelli you're meeting? He's an authority on Fabergé eggs, and I faxed a photo to him and another expert named uh, Gudrun Cooper in Budapest. I'm hoping that whoever owns the egg will be able to tell me who the little girl in the photo is. Well, you better get going. You might yeah. miss your plane. And be aware of tall, dark strangers. Uh, no more remotes for me. I've learned my lesson. <laughs>
Dr. Antonelli, it's Jordan Kirkland. good, walk with me. Act like you've known me all your life. Tell me what is going on. My name's Nicholas Rostov. I'm a specialist in Russian artifacts. Oh, what were you doing in there? I was a friend of Dr. Antonelli's. He sent me a copy of the photo you faxed him, asked me to meet with you this morning. I came here this morning from Budapest, found him, called the police, and you showed up. Well, shouldn't we go talk to the police? told your client didn't want any publicity. I'll tell you what, why don't I get you out of here, and I'll come back later and talk to the police. Why should I trust you? You're right, you shouldn't. Here, it's my card, you can check me out. Miss Kirkland, the Italian police are very thorough and very unsympathetic about people wanting to keep out of the papers. Signore, we're in taxi. If you want to talk, I'll be at the Cafe Rodolfo at four. I frightened you earlier. Glad you agreed to talk to me. Well, Mr. Rostov, the Smithsonian tells me that the great galleries vie for your services. And according to the Louvre, few people recognize a fake as quickly as you do. You're very thorough. You're very young to have such a reputation. I learned from the best. Dr. Antonelli? Do the police know what happened? Might have been a burglary. I had several priceless pieces, but. But. Well, there are there are a lot of disreputable people in the art world. Fortunes can be lost if an expert appraises an article as a fake. I see. Dr. Antonelli was very excited about your photograph. May I look at the original? Of course. this artifact is? No, but my client believes it could be a Fabergé egg. Oh, yes. It's the centerpiece of the Baroden music box. It's a music box? Yes. In 1913, Count Yuri Borden foiled an assassination attempt on Tsar Nicholas II, and the Tsar, out of gratitude, commissioned this music box as a gift for him. It was lost during the Russian Revolution. I never knew a picture had even existed. Who owns this picture? Someone who wishes to remain anonymous, Mr. Rostov. I'm researching their family history. That may be a picture of her as a young girl. Is the Borden family still in Russia? No, they were thrown out after the revolution. The present-day Count lives outside of Budapest, but it wouldn't do you much good to contact him. Why not? He's trying as hard as the rest of us to find it. 
Miss Kirkland, I can help you with your research. And I promise I won't pry into the identity of your client. In exchange for? You share any information that leads to the music box. Could be the find of the century. I don't think so, Mr. Rostov. I've already contacted another expert in Budapest. Dr. Gudrun Cooper? You know, the Count has her own retainer to find the box. Then maybe she has some information. Just be careful what you tell her. She'll stop at nothing to get what she wants. So she also will think I could lead her to the music box? Yes, but she'll be much more difficult to get rid of than I am, and much less fun to be with. It's been a pleasure. I'll give you all the details when I get back, but it's the best lead we've had so far. Yes, I'm sure of it. Yeah, all right. Do you always take the overnight train to Budapest, Mr. Rostov? No, of course not. I usually fly. What about you? I'm on my way to Vienna. It's my way of seeing the sights while I'm working. Excuse me. Photography was in its infancy when this was taken. Of course, the method of processing or the type of paper used even could tell us exactly when it was done. Yes, I'm having some tests done at a lab in Vienna, but the results won't be available for a week. Good. Dating the picture is most important. It's essential that we know whether it was taken before or after the music box disappeared. I've been told that you're helping Count Boridan search for the music box. Yes. Unfortunately, without much luck. Could the little girl be a relative of the Counts? I doubt it. Given that this was taken between 1913 and 1920, she doesn't fit the profile of any member of his family. I see. But don't worry. We'll turn up something. Do you think it would be possible to get an appointment to see the Count? Certainly. I have the feeling that he would be prepared to drop everything to see this. Well, you have my number at the hotel. Call me as soon as you can. Thank you, Miss Cooper. You've been wonderful. Anything you need, just ask. Thank you. It's definitely the music box. It was all I could do to control myself when I saw it. Does she know who owns it? Well, she says she doesn't, but she's being very careful about giving out any information. Where is she now? She's headed for the train station. I happen to know that the concierge at her hotel arranged a ticket to Litka. Okay, maybe. 
post at Gudrun. I want to know everything she finds out. How was your conversation with Gudrun? I have friends at the cafe. How did you know I'd be on this train? I have friends at the railway station, too. You have a lot of friends, don't you? Yeah, just the kind of guy I am. According to the conductor, we're on our way to Litka. I told him I'd be going wherever you're going, and he sold me a ticket. Does Gudrun know your destination? No, I'm doing this on my own. She's not going to leave you alone, you know? Mm. Unlike you, of course. So what are we going to do when we get there? Well, if you must know, I'm going to have a conversation with a local priest. If you're in the mood for a confession, I'd be more than willing to listen. Let's see how much I can guess. 75 years ago, your client's a young orphan fleeing the Russian Revolution. She's taken in by a small town priest and given shelter. Very clever. Well, it's not such an unusual story for back then. And it's rumored that the box was sent to Budapest with some escaping refugees. I'm searching for my client's family history. I really don't care about the box. Nothing Fabergé ever made has so much history around it. I'm told it's worth $10 million. Yeah. For a price tag that high, people get a lot more than just anxious. Me, what I'm you should say? Oh. He's asking if you'd like anything else. No, thank you. You don't speak Hungarian? No. You know, sooner or later, you're going to need an interpreter. No, thank you, Nick. I'm going to do this alone. You're not what I am. Miss Kirkland, I thought you were coming alone. Uh, this gentleman was kind enough to walk me from the station. Bless you for your kindness, my son. We haven't operated as an orphanage for 50 years. But before that, uh, thousands of children passed through these corridors. This little girl would have left Russia after the revolution. Uh, she would have been four years old. I'm not sure what remains from the father. I'm afraid our records are not in the best order. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Katya Davidov. In Russian, the feminine form of a surname ends in A, so she'll be listed as Davidova. Perhaps over there. That's all I know right now, although I'm sure her client knows a lot more about the box than she's letting on. The night train gets back into the city at midnight. I'll call you then. How long ago did the train from Budapest arrive? 45 minutes ago. I had some car trouble. I hope I'm not too late to spoil any deal that you might be cooking up with Miss Kirkland. As a matter of fact, you are. She never even got off the train. I'm gonna meet her in Vienna in a couple days to finalize the details. Really? Mm -hmm. So why are you hanging around? This is where I got off, waiting for the train back to Budapest. You know, maybe I could get a ride back with you. Hey, good one. I'm gonna be watching her like a hawk, so if she comes close to something, she won't be left alone like Antonelli was you think that I had anything to do with his death? 
Because with Antonelli out of the way, she'd be forced to confide in you. I could make the same accusation. But you don't scare me, Rostov. I know too much about your motives to be swayed by your charm. I found something. Look. Katya Davidova. 1921. What does the rest of it say? I can't read Hungarian. It's a standard registration form. Date of birth, age, parents. In this case, all unknown. Unknown. She was transferred here from St. Miklos Hospital in Budapest. Perhaps they have some record. Well, thank you, Father. I'm sure this will help. <laughs> well, it's about time. I see you had an exciting day. Oh, I thought I'd better stick around in case your friend came back. My friend? Yeah, Gudrun Cooper. I told you you'd gone to Vienna. So, want to go back to Budapest, or should we get a hotel room here? I don't know what you're going to do. I'm going back to Budapest. I thought we should celebrate. Mr. Rostov, I really do have work to do. Oh, come on, just one drink. You probably found something wonderful and you're just dying to celebrate. You know, there are some people that you can't win over with charm. Yeah, good thing you're not one of them, huh? So go ahead, ask me anything. I want to prove to you how helpful I can be. Have you ever heard of a St. Miklos hospital in Budapest? In Budapest? No, no, not in Budapest. That is, if there was one, there isn't now. Your client spent some time there? You might as well tell me now. Little by little, I'll drag it out of you. Let's change the subject. All right. How did you become an art expert? Well, I've always been attracted to beauty, and when I admire something, or someone, I like to learn everything I can about them. Does your love of beauty run in the family? Yeah, I would say so. My sister Daria is a ballerina. Magnificent to watch. Mm, I always wanted to be a ballerina. But I took my refuge in the library as a very clumsy child. Oh, I can't imagine you as anything less than graceful. Why don't we just stick with the family history? Okay. My mother was an American. When my father died, my sister and I split our time between Budapest and New York. Well, that sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, what about you? Tell me about yourself. Oh, I was, um... Raised in Minnesota, and my mother... My mother paints and takes ballroom dance lessons, and my father is a retired FBI agent. And well, they raised a romantic with a thirst for the truth. I think I inherited more of my father's practical nature. Well, the romantic side still shows through. So is there a Mr. Kirkland? No, but I used to be Mrs. Ramirez. Used to be? Yes, he was an Argentine interpreter that I met in South America. It just didn't work out. I hate to admit it, but I don't feel all that sorry. Nick, I really would like some privacy. Of course. Would you like some wine? No, thank you.
Somebody was in my compartment. That's it. The next car is the engine. You sure he came this way? I never said he came this way. You came this way. You were coming toward me in this direction. Ah. Doesn't matter. He's long gone now anyway. How convenient. What are you saying that I... Listen, I'm trying to help you. I've had enough of your help, Mr. Ralston. not calling your room, but I wanted to be sure that nobody was there, like Mr. Rostov. I've concluded my dealings with Mr. Rostov. Good, because I've made an appointment for you with Count Barodin this morning. I hope that's not inconvenient. Absolutely not. Good, shall we? Count's family home? No, just his most recent purchase. Actually, his family lived here between the wars, but when the communists took over, they had to move. When the communists left, they got it back. This is fascinating. You can trace your family back to Ivan the Terrible. Yes. But not one Katya Davidova on either side of the family, I'm afraid. Well, then what's her connection to the music box? Perhaps she's related to the people who stole it. When did the music box uh, disappear? In the fall of 1920, when the Bolsheviks finally cracked down on the last remaining intellectuals and aristocrats. Nick Rostov told me that the box came from Budapest with some refugees. I assume Nick also told you that his grandmother claims to be the rightful owner. No, he didn't. The woman's a fraud. And Nick sees me as his chance at a life of luxury. I see. Miss Kirkland, I'm a very influential man. I can open many doors to help you with your research. And in return, you'd like to know what I find out about the music box? It was stolen from my family. Well, right now, I'm trying to find a St. Miklos hospital in Budapest, but no one seems to have heard of it, and uh, your hall of records is closed to foreigners. Gudrun, could you please call Dr. Vishki at the hall of records? Tell her to make any arrangements Miss Kirkland requires. Of course. It's that easy. For some of us. Yes. Well, I must be going. So soon? <laughs> We're just getting to know each other. Please call if there's anything else I can do to help. You're welcome here anytime. Thank you. I'd be quite willing to give you a hand. Oh, thanks, but I work quicker by myself. Thanks. What's your name? There. 
This is your way of apologizing. Hey, I haven't done anything I have to apologize for. A beautiful woman like you deserves flowers every day. Please get out of my way. Look, if I had stolen your papers, I'd already be in the Hall of Records. I'd be halfway to my next clue by now. You didn't steal my papers. Oh, you figured that out on your own, huh? No, there was nothing missing. Whoever it was was scared away before he could take anything. No, why did you say he? It could have been Gudrun. I, I don't understand why you trust her and not me. Maybe because you didn't tell me about your grandmother. I caution you not to get your hopes up. St. Nicholas Hospital was bombed during the war, and the records we've recovered are little more than scraps. Some effort has been made to organize what's left, but there's not much. Oh. Uh, what time are you open till? Six. But the Count has asked that you be allowed to remain as long as you wish. Thank you. Can I get you anything? Maybe a mint condition birth certificate. I'll be in my office as soon as you're ready to leave. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm sorry, sir. We're closed. Well, my friend's still in there. Jordan Kirkland? She'll be working quite late tonight. Well, what about the other gentleman, the one who just went in? Oh, I'm sorry. You must be mistaken. Miss Kirkland and I are the only ones here now. Excuse me. Davidova. Dr. Vishni. sneaking up on me. You're not sneaking up. I came in through a window. I came up those stairs. You've been creeping around in there. I haven't even had time to get in there to creep. I 
He's gone. Now he knows as much about Katya as I do. Do you think Gudrun hired him? Makes sense. She and Borden knew you'd be in there alone. Maybe he was the one on the train from Lidke. Yes, I could have sworn I saw him on the platform of Milan. I guess I owe you an apology. I'm just glad you're all right. I don't want anything to happen to you. Did you get a chance to examine the document? Yes. We're going to have to work together here. Time is of the essence. Whoever attacked you knows the name you're tracing. If I'm going to help you, I have to know it too. Her name is Katya Davidova, and the document was a hospital admission form dated in December of 1920. I also saw the name Pyotr Davidov. Pyotr, that's Russian for Peter. There was something else beside his name in brackets, the letters A-P-A. -A. It's Appa, it's father. Any idea where they were from? Uh, St. Petersburg, she was diagnosed with typhus. Typhus, not much you could do about that in 1920. No, oh, she's one tough cookie. I'll need to make arrangements to go to St. Petersburg. I, I think you'd be wasting your time. If Pyotr Davidov had fled Russia after the revolution, he wouldn't have gone back. Then we'll need to find out where he went and why he and Katya were separated. All right. Will you get some rest? I'll pick you up in the morning. Okay. If Gudrun calls... Don't worry. I'll be careful. I don't remember anybody by the name of Katya Davidov. Of course, we had so many friends back then. Our home was always alive with laughter. I just thought Miss Kirkland had found something we could take advantage of. And you don't remember her either, Maria? No, no more than Natalia. Are you sure that is her right name? I don't think Miss Kirkland would lie to me. Careful how much trust you bestow on her, Nicolai. Too much trust was the downfall of your family. I'm telling her as little as possible. For all we know, the woman she's working for already has the box. Does Count Borodin know about her? Yes. Gudrun introduced them. Oh, those two wolves, they'll stop at nothing. And if Borodin finds the box first, he will hide the proof that it was his family that stole Natalia's lands and title. Her life would have been so much easier if her title had not been stolen. Her life would have been nothing at all without you, Maria. Without you, none of us would have been here. Oh, my mother loved that music box. And we'll find it again, Grandma, and finally prove your claim to his title. Borden's title is yours, Nikolai, it's yours, whether the world acknowledges me or not. Daria, back to your class. Yes, Maria. Call me later, Nick. Yeah. I will see you all. Sometimes I worry that your grandmother is slipping away into her dreams. Well, if we can find that music box, it'll give her a new lease on life. Is uh, Miss Kirkland, is she really so close? Well, like I said, it's the best lead we've got. And if we can find out who this Piotr Davidov is, I think we'll be very close. I wish there was something I could do to help. You've got your hands full with the charity ball. Yes. Are you coming? Of course. Why don't you bring Miss Kirkland with you? It would give the rest of us a chance to meet her. Maria, I don't think Miss Kirkland would be interested in coming out with me. You have finally met a woman who is immune to your charms. Well, I could give it a try. 
From the way you talk about her, I don't think it will be such a difficult charm. She's useful only in our search for the music box, nothing more. All women are not like Sophia, Nick. This one, perhaps, you should get closer to. Hmm? What happened to Peter Davidov after he took me to the hospital? That's what we're trying to find out. We? Oui. Nick Rostov and I. He's an art expert I'm consulting. Uh, Jordan. <sighs> Don't worry, Aunt Kitty. I haven't told him about you. He speaks fluent Hungarian, so he can go through the archives faster than I can. Well, I suppose I should be very pleased you may have identified my father. Although, without the actual document, the trail's a little harder to pick up. What, what, what do you mean, without the document? It was stolen. Stolen? Jordan, I get the feeling you are not telling me everything. <sighs> it's nothing. The last time you told me that, you came home with Ramon. That won't happen this time, I promise. I'll call you tomorrow. Bye. Well, so far I've found 20 Russians named Pyotr Davidov, all of whom have applied for citizenship or paid taxes or asked for an exit visa, all in December 1920. Well, how many from St. Petersburg? I don't know. I'm still checking. Like some more wine? Sure. Oh, uh -huh. sorry. Uh -huh. Oh, thanks. Mm. Uh. It's my fault. Oh, thanks. It's okay. I'll do it. Guess I better get back to work, huh? Yeah, I guess. Nick, if you got a child out of the revolution, what would make you leave her behind? Nothing. I'd die rather than abandon Have this you looked mortgage. for death certificates? No. No, but I'll get right on that. That's good. Listen, uh, can I ask you a favor? What? My godmother Maria wants you to be her guest at the ballet's charity ball, and I'd like you to accompany me. I'm sorry. I don't have any time. Come on. I know you're going to enjoy yourself. And if you meet my family, it might make you feel a little more comfortable about me. Will your grandmother be there? Of course. What's the story behind her claim to the music box? Well, my great-grandmother was a prima ballerina, Olga Galinin. She and the original Count Borodin were lovers. Really? Mm-hmm. She bore him two daughters out of wedlock. They later got married in a private ceremony so his family wouldn't interfere. Why were they opposed to the marriage? The same old reasons. They wanted to marry for money, not love. He died in the revolution, but his family denied my great-grandmother her claim to his estate, even though she had the, the music box as proof. What do you mean, proof? Well, he had inscribed it to Olga, my beloved wife. What happened to her? It said that she tried to use the music box to buy her way out of Russia, but something went wrong. Olga and Grandma Natalia's little sister were killed. Natalia made it out, but the music box disappeared. So the music box would prove that your grandmother is the rightful heir to the Borodin name. Right. And wouldn't then that title be yours one day? Well, that's not really important. I just want to make sure that Natalia's acknowledged for who she really is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, how about that ball? Well, if I'm still here, then, well... It's tonight. What? Yeah, it's for tonight. I don't have time to get ready. I need a gown and my hair. Don't I Don't worry about that. I know a great little dress shop where you can borrow something for me. I know friends in the fashion industry. Great. So, you'll pick a dress. I'll do some research.
ladies. I'd like you to meet Jordan Kirkland from New York. And this is my godmother, Maria Rachmanova. What a pleasure. Hello. My sister, Daria. Pleasure. Hello. What an interesting necklace. Oh, this was a present from my aunt. Where's Grandma Natalia? Oh, she wasn't feeling very well, so I had to take her home. She will be so disappointed not to have met you, Miss Kirkland. Daria, why don't you take our guest and show her around? Hmm? Yes. Thank you. Nikolai, I would like a glass of champagne. Of course. Like a very attractive couple. She's just someone I work with, Maria. How is your work going? I'd be a lot happier if Gudrun Cooper didn't keep showing up. Her and Borden have a lot of contacts that I don't. They might be able to convince Jordan she doesn't need me. Oh, Nikolai, you think of something. You always do. <laughs> These are members of the famed Kuzov Ballet who fled Russia during the revolution. This is my great-grandmother, Olga Galinina, Natalia's mother, and the ballet's prima ballerina. Nick told me about her. She's quite beautiful. Mm. And this is Anatoly Kuzov, the group's maestro, and Maria's adored mentor. He's very handsome. Oy. And this is Maria, in 1920. She was the one who took care of our grandmother, Natalia, after the escape. Miss Kirkland. Good evening. Would you care to dance? Yes. Uh, Daria, please. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse us. I didn't expect to see you here this evening. The ballet ball attracts the cream of Budapest society, even though it includes the Rostov family. Uh, Nick is my date this evening. How so? <laughs> Gudrun tells me she has some information about Katya Davidova for you. You stop by our gallery tomorrow morning. Yes, I will. Congratulations. You charmed the Count. Some men are easy to charm. All men are susceptible to a beautiful woman. Smile, Nikki. Damn it, Bertie, cut that out. Don't go after the film, Nick. There's a lot of other photographers around here. You wouldn't want that kind of publicity, would you? Bertie, come on. Who's your new friend? It's not important. If it wasn't important, you'd tell me. Who is that? It's Bertina Wax. She's a newspaper photographer. Newspaper? Don't worry. It's me she's interested in. Listen, I, I should get you back inside, huh? Nothing in the official adoption files lists anyone by the name of Katya Davidova. Nothing in the private church files either. Goodrin? So very complete. Goodrin, it's is, me. There is, however, an authorization to declare a four-year-old named Katya Davidova a ward of the state. Goodrin. Her father couldn't pay the medical bills. 
I love to talk to the Count and see what he makes of it. Nothing in the official adoption files lists anyone by the name of Katya Davidova. I don't like people telling me how to do my job. Look, I'm tired of arguing with you. You hired me to do a job, and I'm doing it. I thought playing rough in Milan would scare her off, but she doesn't scare. So now I'm doing it my way. Look, I know what it's going to take. Goodbye. This is yesterday's newspaper. Do you have a copy of today's? Right here. Thank you. New York City. Nikki, what are you up to? I told the police I had an appointment to see her, but when I got there... Calling the police was a little risky. Well, I couldn't just leave her like that. Do they know when she died? Oh, sometime last night when we were at the ball. Oh, good. Does that mean you've written me off your list of suspects? Please don't joke about this. Look, why don't you just go home and let me handle this? No, I made a promise. So, just tell your client? Nick! I owe her. If Borodin and Goodrum were behind the other attacks, why was she killed? I don't know. Maybe she knew something that even Borden couldn't afford her to know. I found this on her desk, playing her research notes. You took this? I, d I didn't want my client dragged into this. Listen. There is, however, an authorization to declare a four-year-old named Katya Davidova a ward of the state. Her father couldn't pay her medical bills. Where are you going? I gotta check something out. I want you to stay here and lock the door. Don't answer the phone. I'll try to be back as soon as possible. Jordan Kirkland. To whom am I speaking, please? Kitty Ridgewood. Kitty Ridgewood of Ridgewood Cosmetics? Yes. And do you know Jordan Kirkland? My niece, yes. Your niece? Who is this? Maxwell, it's Bertie. Did you guys develop the film on the charity ball? Good, because if I got a story for you. December 10th, 1920. Pyotr Davidov of St. Petersburg, Russia. No dependents. Requests that the state of Hungary grant an exit visa so that he can go to Vienna and seek employment. How do you know it's the right man? Well, there are no death certificates, but this guy leaves the country right after a young girl named Katya becomes a ward of the state. So he couldn't afford to take care of his child. Considering the conditions, the typhoid epidemic, the crush of refugees, maybe giving her up was better than watching her starve. The poor man. Yeah. You know, most visas require an address in the host country. Oh, look. Lieberman Violins, 218 Ravenstrasse, Vienna. I'll book us a flight. Nick, do you think there's any chance this man is still alive? 
Stop. Leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Nick, it's Bertie. I don't know what the hell you're involved in, but call me. Who is it? It's me, Nick. Open up. Hi. Whoever it is, is long gone. You okay? Oh, yeah. I'm having a great European vacation, stumbling over dead bodies and not knowing who to trust and, and getting shot at and hey, mugged. Don't and... be afraid. I'm right here. And believe me, I'm scared enough for both of us. You know, for a while there tonight, I thought... Well, anyway, I, I realized that treasures and titles are meaningless unless you have somebody to share them with. And I don't want to lose you, Jordan. Stay here for the rest of my life. Mm. So why can't we? Oh, we have to go to Vienna. I think I know a way we can do that without being followed. These tour boats leave every morning. Some do day trips along the river, some go on to Vienna. But if we didn't take any luggage, no one would suspect. We could change boats to make sure we're not followed. Press the button and I'll hear the messages. Okay. Here goes. Hello, Nick. It's Maria. Just calling to see how you are doing. Nick, it's Bertie. I don't know what the hell you're involved in, but call me. Sounds like that's it. All right. Thanks, Daria. Tell uh, Maria I'll call her from Vienna. And uh, I'll take care of Bertie myself. Good luck. Bye. Bertie Wax called? Yeah, I told her I'd buy the film of us. Sounds like she's willing to deal. Come on.
Why don't you wait here and hold the cab? I'd rather deal with Bertie on my own. Did you get the film? Don't worry. She won't be selling it. I'm sorry I haven't called before, but this is the first boat we've been on that's had a phone. Well, you've had me worried sick. I hope this guy is worth it because your Aunt Kitty is frantic to talk to you. She's been calling you? Yes, she wouldn't tell me anything, but she seemed really worried. Well, we'll be in Vienna in an hour. I'll call her then. Okay. And please, be careful. I'll be fine. Bye. Oh, excuse me. Have you seen the man from my table, Mr. Rostov? I just saw him at the newsstand. Oh, thank you. reservations at the Hotel Ursula. Perhaps you'd like to explain this. It says here that the photographer who took these pictures was murdered. Her body was found by an anonymous caller the same day that we left Budapest. Jordan, let me explain. And which lie would you like to start with? It also says here that she was killed the same way that Gudrun and Antonelli were. His body was also found by another anonymous caller who didn't stick around to talk to the police either. Antonelli was a friend of mine, and you know I was with you the night Bertie was killed. Why didn't you tell me? My client's identity has been revealed. She's livid. The same stories all over the states. You lied to me. How do I know you've been telling me the truth about any of this? You've just been using me. What did you want me to do, Jordan? We needed our secrecy. with Sonia Lieberman. Oh, Miss Kirkland? Yes. Oh, I've been expecting you. <sighs> nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Hello. Why did you come this way? Thank you. Pyotr Davidov was a poor Russian amigre, just like my grandfather. That's him. He became a very good craftsman, and for a while he lived with us. Did he ever mention a little girl named Katya? Oh, yes, many times. As a child, I reminded him of her. She fell ill with typhus and hungry. He had no money to pay her medical bills, so he had to give her up. It must have been very hard for him to leave his own child. Katya wasn't his daughter. In fact, that was just the name he gave her to smuggle her out. She was just a child he helped get out of Russia. Really? Yes. You know what? My father's taught some of Pyotr things away after he died. They are downstairs. Why don't we go and have a look? Great. 
What does this say? Uh, to my most loyal servant, signed Anatoly Kuzov. Thank you so much, son. You've been a great help. Thank you. Bye-bye. Picture or slip it up? has been following us since we left the store. Oh, you want me to lose him? No. I'll just make a couple of quick turns, but don't sit. Okay. until I go into the store before you go, please. Call the police and tell them that the man in this car is carrying an illegal firearm. Okay. Thanks. Ah, oh, thanks.
How did you find me? I was standing in the lobby and I heard all the car alarms go off. I went outside and... Thank you. Listen, I'm sorry about the papers. My ex-wife, Sophia, was an actress and... Well, more jet-setting party girl than an actress, really. The tabloids used to follow us everywhere. Why are they still following you? Because of my grandmother's claim on Count Borden. Keeps us in all the papers. I'm sorry about not talking to the police. If you want me to call them right now, I will. You want me to go? Piotr Davidov was Kutsov's servant. It's conceivable he smuggled the music box out of Russia. Well, from the way Sonia Lieberman described him, I think he would have sold the box to pay for Katya's medical bills. Let's go over what we have so far. All right. My great-grandmother marries Count Borden, the owner of the music box. He dies. There's a revolution. My grandmother, Natalia, and the music box are smuggled out of Russia. The music box disappears. Back in Russia, my great-grandmother and my grandmother's sister die. But the music box turns up in a photograph owned by an orphan who was smuggled out by Kuzov's loyal servant, Pyotr Davidov. What's this? Uh, it's from the photo lab. The photographer used an acid bath to date the photo to 1916. Well, my Aunt Kitty was born about 1916, so she can't be the little girl in the photograph. I think it's about time we talk to someone who can tell us who she really is. Mother woke us that morning and dressed us herself. She said we had to be very brave little girls Papa would be proud of. We tried very hard. But then she said we had to go without her. Little Alexandra, my sister, started to wail. My mother relented and let her stay behind. Who took you across the border? Oh, Maria. I wouldn't have lived without her. Oh, we were all sick with fever, cold and hungry. And then one morning I woke, the fever had gone. Maria had led us to freedom. What about the music box? Oh, I was so young. I didn't know what had happened to it. Later, word came that Alexandra and Olga had died. This was when Maria became Natalia's new mother. Grandma Natalia, do you know the little girl in this photo? Where did you find this? It belongs to the woman whose family I'm trying to find. It's me. I gave this to young Alexandra so she wouldn't forget me until we were reunited. Incredible. My Aunt Kitty might be your great aunt. How closely would we be related? Well, technically, we'd be fourth cousins. Oh, well, that's a relief. That's... <laughs> Good day, Miss Kirkland. Count Borodin. I've been reading the tabloids. You've heard my rival side of the story. I thought you might like to hear mine over lunch. She doesn't need to. It would be a pleasure, Count. Good. I'll expect you at one. I can't let you go through with 
Yes, that man is the only one who's known every move we've made. Well, if you're so concerned, you'll just have to come with me. Aunt Kitty's mystery is solved. But now we have to find the box to prove it. Thank you for escorting my guests. Mr. Rostov, Frederick will take care of you. Uh, excuse me, but I'd like Mr. Rostov to witness anything we have to discuss. As you wish. Please take a seat. Thank you, Frederick. Now, where shall we begin? Why don't you describe how you smeared my grandmother's name all these years? After the revolution, Western Europe was overrun with impostors claiming to be dukes, counts, even lost children of the Tsar. And almost all of them turned out to be frauds or fortune hunters. Yes. And those of us with legitimate bloodlines had our reputations tarnished with the rest. It's been a long struggle back. You're not the only one to have this struggle. Look, <laughs> Count Boradin, there's been a man who's been trying to kill me. He didn't have anything to do with Gudrun's death, did he? Oh, and you don't know? Only the three of us are looking for the music box. Nick thinks you killed Gudrun to hide something she found. But she didn't have enough pieces of the puzzle. What are you trying to say? I think there's someone else involved in the hunt. Someone who knows more about this than all of us put together. Is anyone else after your fortune count? Only Natalia Rostova. She's not interested in your money. She's just trying to prove who she is. Look, if the title's hers, it's hers. But to be honest, calling yourself a count these days is a little gauche. And I was right. This is about something else. Thank you. Nick, I'm going to need to talk to your grandmother again. I mean, there's something that's just not right. Hang on a second. What is it? It's a bomb. Saved my life. Actually, I think I've just saved both your lives. All we have to do now is figure out who hired this man. I hope he doesn't hire somebody else. Who exactly is it that's trying to prevent Nick or I getting a hold of this box? Kuzov smuggles out his ballet company, everyone but Olga. The box was to pay her way out. But he was brokenhearted when she was killed. He probably would have given up the ballet if. What? If he hadn't found someone else to rely upon. Who? The same one that's been relying on me. Come on. With the hired killer dead, I think the search will go much faster now. The police have a strong lead on who hired him. Well, the important thing is that you are both okay. Alexandra is arriving tomorrow, you see. Yes, except she calls herself Kitty now. Ah. 
I am so glad that Natalia's sister is alive. Aunt Kitty really wants to meet you. Nick told her what an important role you played in her family history. We'll see you tomorrow, huh? Oh, yes. Bye. Give me the case, Maria. Olga trusted you to sell the music box and help her out of Russia, but you didn't. Nikolai, how dare you accuse me? And you know why you didn't? Because of your own ambition. Oh, no, give sure. back to me. I never meant Olga any harm. I only wanted her to stay in Russia. Husov never saw anyone else's dancing but hers. I only wanted to show him what I could do. You knew that Pyotr Davidov was trying to get Alexander out of Russia, but when he asked for your help, you refused. And what servant would dare argue? He had no one to tell and no one to turn to, so you assumed you were safe. Until you saw the photograph. When I discovered that Alexandra was alive, I was afraid it might have been Davidov who raised her, and uh, that she wouldn't know. I tried to get Alexandra out of the hospital, but I was too late. She was gone. I never meant any harm to the children. Oh, no, no. You just wanted to keep them away from their mother. And how about that guy you hired to kill everybody that could lead us to the truth? No. I only wanted to scare you. He said he had to go further. I never meant to harm anyone. But I couldn't let you find me out. You were all my family. A family that I maintained. I caused it to happen and kept it going for three generations. I didn't want to lose you. I don't know what to say to you, Jordan. I ask you to conduct a discreet investigation. The next thing I know, my Aunt name Kitty. is... Kitty. You can berate me all you want in a minute, but for now, not another word. Nick, this is Kitty Ridgewood. And Kitty, this is Nicholas Rostov. Hi, how do you do? Is he the reason I'm here? Please, come in.
Welcome home, Alexandra. Your real name is Alexandra Borodin. This is your older sister, Natalia. <laughs> 15th Countess Porter Dinner, fourth in line to the throne of Russia. After all these years, I thought you were dead. I didn't dare let myself believe you existed. you'd be here when we turned over the final proof. But, but that's just like... The... the one you wore as a child. I didn't know what it was for. It was just that it was the last gift Mother gave me. To Olga, my beloved wife. Well, Countess Borodina, looks like we finally got your proof. And you have your family and kidding. Considering all the pain Maria caused her, your grandmother doesn't seem very bitter. I think seeing her sister after all those years has erased all that's gone before. Yeah, well, I've reunited family members before, but it never made me so happy as it did this afternoon. Because it's our family. That's what makes it so special. <laughs> our family? It sounds yeah. so strange. Oh, I think it has a nice ring to it. It's going to be hard leaving this all behind. Then don't. Why don't you stay here? I love you, Jordan. I, I don't ever want you to go away. I don't know if I could get used to calling you a count. Well, I have a great solution for that. Just marry me and call me a husband. <laughs> 